studying science in the field. What I love about my job is being able to spend a lot of time outside. I get to take my dog to work, which is brilliant, and it's lots of fun, I really enjoy it. I walk through the farmer's fields looking for things like pests, weeds and diseases. I then give advice to the farmer on things like nutrient management, crop protection products, environmental protection and things like soil management as well. Although I work for a company, really I have to be my own boss and be flexible but organised and manage my own time and no two farms are the same so I'm always learning. When I was 16 I was really interested in agriculture so I did all sorts of odd jobs like fruit picking and just doing general bits and bobs on the farm. I then did a degree in biology which led me to do a masters in agriculture. I then worked in trials for about two and a half years doing soils research and now I've become an agronomist. Looking ahead to the future I can see that my job is going to change a bit and that's quite exciting because we're going to lose quite a lot of the current crop protection products we need to use other methods without using these chemicals to make sure that we have a good clean crop. A lot of agriculture is big scale stuff. It's got some big problems too. It needs crop scientists like me to look for the solutions. Today, as part of my scientific research, I'm on the hunt for nematodes. Now, these are microscopic worms which infest our sugar beet crop. And my work is looking how we can reduce their ill effects and maximize yield for growers. When these are fully grown, it'll take five of these to produce this one kilogram of sugar. However, when fields are infested with the nematode I'm studying, we can lose up to half of this. The job I do can be really varied. Some days I'll be out in the field collecting samples, like today. Otherwise, I can be in the lab, analysing and writing up results to pass on the information to the growers funding the research. To be a good crop scientist, um, I believe you need a lot of determination. You need to then be able to understand what you found out and then pass that information on to the growers effectively and to other people in the industry to make sure that what you found out is of use to them. To be a good scientist, you've got to have a passion for your work and for the specific fields you're in. For crop science, it's definitely biology. You need to understand why things can change from year to year and season to season. And you also need to have a good grasp of data analysis. My route to this job uh, was always through my passion for agriculture and for feeding the world. So I studied A-levels and then went to study agriculture at the University of Nottingham, where I then stayed on to study my PhD. You certainly don't have to be born into farming to become a crop scientist. I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was at university and never ever saw myself as a crop scientist, but it's great fun. I think if there was one word that describes my job, it's a bit of a cop-out, but it would be variety. Yeah, let's go with variety. I'm looking at the problems uh, in fields from the plant clinic and where farmers have sent in disease samples, trying to work out what's gone wrong and how we can help fix it but also looking at, into the future, so warning farmers of the risks that are coming, and that's quite exciting because this is right on the edge, right on that applied side of science and agriculture. I did GCSEs and A-levels, and then went on to the University of Leicester to do a biology degree. But I got into this job through work experience, and if I want to progress in this field, if I want to start writing my own project, I need to get that PhD. So that's the next big challenge, and that's going to be another three or four years of studying and work. But it means I can then jump up that ladder in terms of science work. You don't have to make the decision early. Do a broad degree if that's what you want, and then realise what exactly you want to do. Because there are so many different parts of science and agriculture. I work with viruses and bacteria and fungi, other people might be looking more at the plant itself, how it grows, why it uses so much water, how it recovers. It really is a decision to be made once you've exposed yourself to all those different areas. If you're interested in a science career, clearly you need to have some science in your education. Um, and biology would be the main one, I would say, because agriculture is focused around biology, whether it's plants or animals, um, biology is the key thing. If other sciences are not your thing, then you could mix that with things like geography, which also bring in uh, understanding of the rural environment. There are so many careers in agriculture. You could study an agriculture or an agriculture related degree, such as crop science, plant science, animal science, or something maybe a little bit broader, such as applied biology. And then you can always do a more specialist MSc or even a research degree like a PhD later on. 
The college routes work really well. I've um, uh, had a number of students who, rather than done uh, A-levels, they've decided to go to college first and done uh, a BTEC extended diploma. That's a good, a good option. The really good thing about those is that if you're interested in practical stuff, you can learn through doing more. Uh, and then if you decide you want to go further on, you can, you've still got the option uh, to go to university using those qualifications rather than A-level. So you don't have to follow the traditional GCSE A-level university route. There are lots of other options. The cost of further and higher education can be quite daunting, but the good thing in the agriculture sphere is there are lots of sources of funding that you could potentially tap into. There are a huge number of agricultural charities out there, uh, which you could, you could search on depending on what you want to study and where, uh, where you're from, and they could contribute towards your tuition fees, uh, perhaps towards your living expenses. I think the more experience you can get the better, whatever you do, whether that's uh, travelling, whether that's working overseas or whether that's just shadowing an agronomist for instance. Um, so I think any experience you can get, it makes you sort of stand out a bit because lots of people have degrees these days and you want to have something to show potential employers in the future that you're really connected and that you really know what you're, what you're taking on. Maybe getting a research placement for a summer, so some of our students have done that, come and worked for eight weeks over the summer to see what it would be like to be a PhD student. So my final message would be just take every opportunity that you can because it's all good experience and will all set you up in, in good stead for the future. My advice to you if you'd like a career in science and agriculture is to go for it. It's very rewarding and ever-changing. I never thought of doing science and agriculture until my final year at university. There are so many opportunities coming up in crop science and I hope my career will be able to take me all over the world in the future researching lots of different crops and helping the world feed itself more sustainably.